Knock at the Cabin is a modern day take on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Kind of. Hi there. Can I talk to you for a little bit? You have to come inside right now. There were four of them. What do we say? You shouldn't make things up when we're talking about... Can you open the door, please? M. Night Shyamalan has done it again, but this time with zero twists in this film. Seriously, there is zero twist in this film. I, I don't like that. I thought we had an understanding that you make films and then you put twists in the end of it and we all kind of like go, oh, that's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. But in this film, zero twists. Let's get on with it. Today's movie is Knock at the Cabin. We shall discuss what's it about, how it feels, best thing about it, worst thing about it can you watch it while playing with your mobile phone should you even watch it and of course the ratings at the end these are of course my two cents as i always say no movie is bad it's just not for you the premise of this film is basically four strangers turned up to a couple's holiday cabin uh, the couple is played by ben aldridge and uh, jonathan gruff from the matrix <laughs> Mr. Anderson! And also a, a very beautiful Netflix series called Mindhunter. Y'all should go and see it. It's, it's, it's great. It's, I mean, it's dark, but it's great. Whilst the couple were on this little holiday getaway with their little daughter, four strangers suggested that they need to save humanity. And the only way to save humanity is if one of them dies. And that's it. That's pretty much this whole movie. We were called and are united by a common vision, which has now become a command that we cannot ignore. The four of us are here to prevent the apocalypse. This film feels like any M. Night Shyamalan movie except for with zero twists that's it the best things about this film the cinematography is beautiful feels really nice it's smooth it feels like someone spent money on it the budget is moderate but it's good there's not a lot of locations though but it's still nice. It, it's got steady images, which means that you know, dollies were used. This is not important to you, but it's just something I like. I like a smooth image. I like that a lot. Dave Batista is getting more dialogue in this film. I don't know if you're aware of this. He decided to drop out of Guidance of the Galaxy because he feels as though his character was too dumb and he would like to you know, explore more dialogue scenes so that he can prove to the world that he's a, he's a good actor and not just some muscle man. This has um, been by far the most challenging um, project I've ever done. This is the role, like literally this is the role that I've been waiting in. And it's really to, it's, it's, it's to, it's to prove myself, it's to prove my worth. I love you, Dave. You don't have to prove anything to me. Well, you shouldn't prove anything to anyone, but I can understand having a chip on your shoulder. Not like he watches his video or cares. This film keeps you guessing and that's always kind of fun because you, you want to guess how the whole thing plays out because you know, that's what you sort of paid for. Or maybe you're streaming this, which is still the same thing. I mean, you still kind of paid for your streaming service. So their little adopted daughter is pretty good. Like she's uh, she's quite a good actor for her age. Uh, I'm always impressed when kids remember their lines. I've done a little acting myself and I absolutely suck. It's just, sometimes it's hard to just remember it's so many dialogues. So, you know, I, I think for her age, she did a damn good job. Worst thing about this film, in this film, Rupert Grint plays a very small role. I wanted to see more from him. He hasn't done a lot lately. If you guys don't know who Rupert Grint is, he's from Harry Potter, he's the redhead one. Wingardium Leviosa. All the characters that die in this film, you tend to feel like you have zero chemistry with, so you don't care why they die. I feel like the whole story was a little bit rushed. Um, it didn't, I just feel like this film did not particularly stick to landing. I like the, the entire storyline. I like where they're going with it, but it didn't stick to landing because those characters you will end up caring less about because you have no information about their backstory. 
Can you watch this film while playing on your mobile phone? Yes. Unfortunately, yes, you can. It's a passive watch. You don't have to pay much attention to it. Should you watch it? Yes, I think you should watch it. And here's why. Sure, this film doesn't stick to Landon and there are no twists, but it does deliver on what it promises. And that's pretty weird for M. Night Shyamalan. He usually does a film and then somewhere in it, there's a twist. And, you know, sometimes it works for him and sometimes it doesn't work. But it's a film that just sort of makes you feel like saying, hey, let's watch this movie on a Saturday night or a Friday night. It, it doesn't, it's not too deep. Um, it just makes you feel like, you know what, we're participating, we're watching something cinematic. And I, in some ways, that's kind of special.